to start us off, uh, welcome everyone to our session. Uh, we are uh, very uh, grateful and um, excited uh, to be with you all today. Um, please let us know in the chat that you can hear us okay and um, we are looking forward to your engagement with us uh, today. Um, and as um, collaborators, uh, we have been guided um, together by the vision that in order to create a better future, uh, we have to imagine it first. And as we look into the future to imagine what can be created um, to do so, uh, we must first acknowledge our past and our present. Um, so first, I, uh, my name is Noor, my pronouns are she, her, and I want to acknowledge that I am joining you from the um, traditional unceded territory and ancestral homeland of the Mansi Lenape and Canarsi people. Um, I give my respect and my gratitude to the Lenape people, um, their elders and their ancestors of the past, the present, and the future. Um, and I want to acknowledge the enduring relationship that exists between indigenous people and their um, traditional territories. Um, I uh, I wanted. I failed to mention that the um, the traditional territory and ancestral homeland of Mansi Lenape and Canarese people is today known as New York, um, and that um, an acknowledgement is a simple way of showing uh, respect and a, and a step towards correcting the stories and the practices that erase Indigenous people's uh, history and culture, and towards inviting and honoring um, the truth. Um, and I also want to acknowledge um, that due to over 800 years of colonization and occupation, my ancestral homeland of the Galilee is today known as five different nation states, uh, Jordan, Palestine, Lebanon, Syria, and Israel. Um, and uh, as we begin by acknowledging our collective past and by invoking uh, our individual lived experiences, um, we include the full uh, spectrum of uh, um, of, uh, of uh, our experiences uh, by acknowledging both the traumas we do not seek to repeat as well as the joys that we wish um, to replicate. And I would like to um, hand it over to uh, Nina Woodruff Walker. Hello everyone, my name is Nina Woodruff Walker. I am the executive director for the Museum of Children's Art residing in Oakland which is a Ohlone territory. I like to pay respect to my ancestral lineage, which is in the continent. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to identify which um, countries specifically, but I know that I have um, ancestral lineage in the continent. Um, I also have ancestral lineage in China, um, in Bermuda, and then in Great Britain because of slavery that's in the US. Um, so I like to acknowledge those. I also like to point out the fact that it's very important that children have access to uh, foresight training um, because their imaginations and their um, internal guidance with creativity is much more attuned than us as adults. We somehow um, lose a lot of that as we age. Uh, but I wanna acknowledge the fact that access to foresight and futures uh, learning is important uh, for children, specifically under the age of 18. Um, their imaginations and their understanding of the world is very interesting and should be included in these discussions. Thank you. I'd like to pass it on to Audrey. Thank you, Nina. Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us. My name is Audrey Williams, co-founder of Ancestral Futures. I would like to begin by acknowledging the land where I am currently residing, similar to Nina, I'm here in Northern California, which is the ancestral homeland of the Ohlone and is unceded territory. I also want to acknowledge the lands of my personal heritage, starting with my mother, whose bloodline comes through South Asia, specifically India and Burma, as changed by the colonization of the British, French, and Portuguese over centuries. I also want to acknowledge my father's bloodlines coming from the African continent and further acknowledge that due to the transatlantic slave trade, there are eight different peoples of Africa that I'm still researching. Thank you. I pass it off to Lonnie Brooks. Hi, <clears throat> thank you. Um, and uh, 
welcome to our session and, and I'm glad to be here. Um, yes, I am an associate professor at Cal State East Bay and um, uh, work with um, the Black Speculative Arts Movement and the Institute for the Future. I want to acknowledge um, also the ancestral lineage of California, where I'm hailing from in Oakland and the land of the Ohlone people. Um, and acknowledge my ancestry is is complex and varied and um, a good percentage of my lineage is from Nigeria and the continent. And um, I'm also Native American and Jewish and to acknowledge those coming into play here um, and, and celebrate those those multiverses that I live in every day. So thank you. Um, just really glad that we're here with this, uh, this special group of people, my, my dream team here. Uh, <laughs> so I guess, shall we go into an overview of uh, what created uh, the game and, and the background? So I will share my screen. Um, and so let's talk about a little bit about um, Afro Rhythms. I'm, I'm gonna share my screen and hopefully it will work. So let's, <laughs> let's try this. Um, okay. So hopefully you can see that. Can you see that? Just checking. Yes, I believe uh, we can see that. Yes, we can. Great. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll just maximize it too. Okay. So um, maybe easier if I just, let's see, let me just, um, I'll try playing it if it, if it gets clunky then uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, Afrofuturism Afro in this journey uh, is about using this game, Afro Rhythms from the Future, as a forecasting game centering race and anti-racism and speculative futures. Um, and, and again, that acknowledgement of the rich and varied ancestry of um, Native American territory too, it's always important as a land acknowledgement to me and um, going forward, we're looking at uh, <clears throat> how we're situated in algorithms these days. And there's this great book called Algorithms of Oppression, How Search Engines Reinforce Racism from Sophia Noble. And that's where the game um, gets its name from in terms of Afro rhythms from the future. What happens if we shift the gaze of the way that we look at the world um, from a patriarchal, white patriarchal lens to one that's anti-racist and democratic um, and celebrates and liberates everyone. So that's uh, the name of the game. I love this, uh, this particular image uh, of this woman uh, in Oakland who owns a horse ranch and is, was proudly was a, went upon this horse uh, during the uprisings in Oakland uh, this spring. And it's just uh, fills me with pride. So basically black futures matter. The black diaspora and those in the African continent, um, our lives matter. Like this game helps to center the way that we can see the world from an Afrocentric lens and an African lens as well. Um, the rise of astro blackness is this important term by the Reverend Andrew Rollins um, that talks about the rise of astro blackness, a person's black state of consciousness that's released from the confining and crippling slave or colonial mentality, who becomes aware of the multitude and varied possibilities and probabilities within the universe. And our vibranium, our vibranium is our innovation. How black people have always been futurists and we have to be in the black diaspora. Afrofuturism aims to reclaim and transform the trauma of past atrocities against the black and Afroqueer diaspora. Um, and also to contribute how we can to the nations of the African continent as well and our brothers and sisters there. Afrofuturism combines science fiction and fantasy to re-examine how the future is currently imagined and to envision alternative futures based on the black experience. It's a cultural worldview for interrogating Eurocentric motifs. And there's this great um, exhibition called Unveiling Visions, the Alchemy of the Black Imagination that happened in 2015 and it gave rise to um, a movement called the Black Speculative Arts Movement, BSAM for short. And there's a great um, 
painting by Manzel Bozeman. <clears throat> and we look at radical black art as a futures window where we trace the black fantastic too, which looks at listening to the minor key sensibilities generated from the experiences of the underground. I love this quote by Richard Eitan. And when we talk about future types that trace the circulating science fiction capital that's filled with promises of the future that can simultaneously constrain and unleash our imaginations. We also have this term called Afrofuture types, black signals of the future that, in, that find and reclaim the traces of black cultural visions alongside erasures of those visions and signals. So one quick example of that is kind of finding and rediscovering our stories, um, such as there's this great film, if you haven't seen it called The Hidden Figures, where it talks about three black women, astronauts and engineers who helped chart the trajectory of uh, the United States into space in the 1960s. If you haven't seen the film or hadn't read the book, you, um, you wouldn't have known that this, was, that this had happened. And we only recently found out about this a few years ago. So it's really kind of celebrating these undiscovered stories of the Black diaspora. I love this, this painting by Manzel Bozeman that talks about and speaks to the simultaneity of past, present, and future of the Black diaspora and African nations and tribes and peoples. Um, another one, when is Wakanda, uh, this great poster by Stacey Robinson, and also curating the end of the world, another great celebration of um, Black art in the US. It's um, online as a two-part exhibition. And so we think of Afrorhythms as democratizing the future. Um, you can find out more information by going to afrorhythms.com um, or emailing me at dr.brooks at gmail.com. Um, but now this is might be a good point where we can preview the film of the game so you can get a sense of it for yourselves. And so let's uh, let's preview our game and play our video right now. And thank you for listening. So I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, thank you. And um, actually, before we uh, we show the game and uh, play with um, with some of the audience members that are here, I want to uh, share ancestral futures and invite Audrey to yes. um, to uh, speak to some of the context. Um, uh, yes. You could yeah. let, can you? Uh, you can see my screen. Oh, I can see it. Yeah, you, can okay. you can click to maximize it. Yeah. Click dice. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Noor and everyone. Um, so I just wanted to quickly share. So um, I'm co-founder of Ancestral Futures. We're a nonprofit speculative literary arts and education organization. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is because as we begin to talk about the Black speculative arts movement, um, I think it's also, um, in addition to acknowledging our ancestral lands and our ancestral bloodlines, I, I think of the writers and poets and artists who have come before as my literary and artistic ancestors. And so one of the reasons this organization exists, um, as Noor mentioned, um, before we can move forward with futures thinking, it's always helpful to ground ourselves in the past. And I'd like to acknowledge those who have opened the doors and continue to hold the doors open for us. So I just wanted to name some of the um, the wonderful uh, literary artists who have been, as I said, literary ancestors um, to us. So Octavia Butler, Lucille Clifton, June Jordan, Audre Lorde, um, even someone like Prince, who sort of set the stage for this fierce, radical imagination and this amazing Black excellence. So um, there's so many people who are not actually um, ancestors who are currently doing this work, such as Nnedi Okorafor, Walida Imarisha, N.K. Jemison, Nalo Hopkinson, Alexis Pauline Gums, who was a personal mentor of mine, um, Janelle Monet, Nisi Shaw, uh, Sheree Renee Thomas. I just wanted to put these names out there because if it wasn't for people like this who sort of paved the way for us in the past, um, you know, we, we wouldn't be able to be moving forward in the present and uh, creating brighter futures. So thank you for that. Oh, can I just jump in too? I just wanted to say uh, thank Audrey as well because I'm doing a mentor mentorship uh, in writing uh, because of her organization. And so I love that. 
And then with Nina uh, and, 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 and Audrey and Noor, we are proudly launching a community future school too at the Museum of Children's Arts in Oakland. So just all this team coming together to really make foresight available to young people. So that's really gonna be fun. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Brooks, for that. And I, um, maybe Nina, until I put on the video, uh, would you like to speak to uh, the the work at um, the Children's Museum that that you are doing? Yes. Yeah, so very briefly, we provide arts integration for students in K through 12. Um, typically, K through 8 is where we find uh, that the students are much more willing to explore and play around with visual arts. Um, and they're um, very open to integrating art and learning about other subjects um, by way of using art as a vehicle. Uh, we, in the, in the high school age range, we typically work with those students to um, hone in their craft and to help them um, sort of build upon their um, art making skill sets that they have already built in the K through eight space. Uh, so that's really where we are. We're in about 43 schools in the Bay Area of California. Um, and then we also have a museum space where we exhibit artwork. Um, and as of late, it's been very intergenerational. Um, and it, it has a variety of different lenses from Afrofuturism to queer, queerness to uh, Black feminism and Indigenous feminism. So we are using theories and works of other works of art to explore uh, very intense topics, um, including anti-racism. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Nina. Um, I'm gonna, Dr. Brooks, do you wanna cue up um, uh, the video and then maybe after I can talk about resilience and why we are anchoring our game into 2032 specifically. Definitely. So um, we always like to orient folks to the game by showing how we played the game in the past. So we did, we played Afro Rhythms in the Future uh, last year at this uh, workspace venue called Neuhaus in Hollywood, California um, with our team. Um, it's called World Building with the Afro Futures Podcast is the name and title of the video um, because the game is part of the Afro Futures Podcast Network that I uh, help create and co-produce with Ahmed Best who facilitates the game in this session and with our co-designer Eli Kozminski too that's up front with me that you'll see when we also have someone graphically facilitating and uh, drawing the game and how people are responding to the game um, graphically so it's a it's a nice uh introductory video about the game and you get a sense of how to play from looking at it so um so again we're building with the afro futures podcast using afro rhythms from the future so let's take it away We all have agency over what the future can bring. Each of us individually can shape not only our personal future, but the future that we all live in. And the object of tonight is to get you to imagine. We want to get you to get out of the frame of reference of what you think your future might be and get as creative as possible. And we're going to see what we can build using that imagination and speculative thought and we might come up with some cool stuff so there are people who have tension cards these tension cards are going to establish the parameters of our universe and we're going to choose two cards let me see uh, raise your hand if you have a tension card all right all the way back there more or less black feminist leadership more or less black feminist leadership who else has a tension card more or less social justice more or less social justice so now that we have the parameters of our universe, we have created four multiverses that we can live in all along the spectrum of those two choices. So now you guys in your chairs, you have 
inspiration cards. All right, let me see. What is your inspiration card? Oh, I have fashion. Okay, fashion. I like this one. I like fashion. What would be an article of fashion that would give you more Black feminist leadership and more social justice? Yes. I was just thinking about the notion of the invisibility cloak, but also like to have it be reversed. Like it can make you invisible, but it can also make you more visible, amplifying like what you normally So an amplification cloak. A Go. Bodysuit. A bodysuit. What does this bodysuit do? How about a bodysuit that repels hmm. emotional damage? Oh. oh shit. Okay, here we go, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. So we have a bodysuit that when anything emotional tries to come and get you, it repels it. How could it be dystopian? Dictators can use it. How so? They're not feeling emotional damage, then there's no consequence to society. So it feels like it could be a very negative thing to have a suit. Right. So that could be dystopian. Okay, I need another inspiration, another object. Inspiration, queer liberation. Queer liberation. Object, who has an object? Object, 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 here. Buttons. Buttons. You can press the button to change your gender. Oh. A gender shifting button. Who's with that? Yeah. The button should be more like, you're more on the spectrum, you're fluid. Yeah, it's more like post binary. It's not binary. So, what if the button is just like, it just regulates you through your queer liberation? It's a dial. It's not a button, it's a dial. Right? Research has shown that we can create alternative memories that heal trauma. And how do we heal the trauma of 400 years of oppression? How do we heal any personal trauma that we've had individually, uh, collectively? And how do we create alternative memories of the future that pull us in and create resiliency for everybody? So we see this game as potentially available in schools, uh, colleges. I played it with my students. I like playing it with students also because, especially your students of your Afrofuturism course, they want to be creating their own cards and their own ideas that they're putting into the game. So it's not just using what we've given them, but adding to it. Let it become uh, a democracy of the future for everyone available to everyone. Great. Um, I want to take this opportunity to uh, welcome some of the people that have joined over the, in the last few minutes to our session. Um, we would uh, love to hear from you. So do let us know um, where you are joining us from. And um, the next part of our time, uh, the remaining part of our time together will um, depend on your engagement with us. So we invite your engagement with us and you are, uh, you will actually be able to uh, participate using audio and video um, uh, as well. So uh, if you would like to participate uh, um, with us uh, in the room, uh, please uh, do use um, that tool. Uh, we will be able to let, I believe, six of the members that are uh, with us uh, in the room right now to participate. So I just want to make sure that that um, that that you are uh, that you know that we are really looking forward to your engagement with us. Um, uh, and this is uh, when we uh, invite you to speculate the future with us. Um, the year uh, specifically is um, 2032, and um, I uh, am I represent Resilience 2032, which is um, an, an alternate reality experience that takes place 12 years from now. Um, the reason why we chose 2032 is because it happens to be two years after the UN Sustainable Development Goals were meant to be due. It is also an election year uh, in the US, but um, the decisions and the actions um, and inactions <laughs> around some of uh, um, the uh, global issues we are facing from climate change uh, to systemic inequality and data ethics and a relationship to, to technology, um, the decisions and actions we make uh, over the next year will have repercussions for uh, generations to come. And, um, and so uh, we are inviting, um, we're inviting participants to live the future 
uh, now um, to inspire action and engagement in uh, issues that we can no longer afford to be complicit to. Um, and with that, yes, um, let me share. Dr. Brooks, would you like me uh, to share the game or? Um, sure, if, if, do you have the edited uh, version? I believe so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, Let's okay. go for it. <laughs> okay. All right. Can you see it? Yeah. Great. And yeah, um, you might, okay. as a reminder to participants, that you'll need to double click on that screen so that you can see it. Um, and I, I can um, just uh, that first uh, vision, that first painting that you saw was by Katina Katina Win uh, called and suddenly froze. So it's about the the mothership, uh, black inspired. So um, and that's a potent symbol with with Afrofuturism too, and uh, with the black diaspora. So uh, yes. Anyway, yeah, we can go forward. Uh, mm -hmm. To, this is the logo of the uh, the past logo on the on the on the left for Afrorhythms in the future, and the the latest logo in the middle. And this, uh, uh, this logo is created by Alan Clark, a local artist in Oakland. Just fantastic, fantastic work. So we'll, I should uh, I'll, I'll pop a link to his uh, website in the uh, in the chat later on. And uh, so this this Afrorhythms is about changing the future at various time horizons, and we've chosen the time horizon of 2032 right now um, mm -hmm. to coincide with Resilience 2032. Again, there's just some examples of what people created in the game from that video we saw. Um, so we can we can go forward to, mm -hmm. and um, and uh. Nora, did you want to talk about the tensions or have me do it or whatever yeah, works? Sure. Um, so we are looking to, um, if you've seen the video, uh, we uh, before we kind of begin with the ideation, we want to anchor ourselves into two into tensions. And the tensions that we had um, agreed on uh, as a collaborative where um, what would a world in 2032 look like with more or less um, uh, women-led uh, Black feminist leadership um, and more or less uh, community building. Um, and uh, we also wanted to invite you to share some of the tensions um, that are relevant to uh, your communities in these moments. Um, so uh, if you, uh, we would love to invite you to to what we're calling wild seed cards. Um, perhaps, Audrey, would you like to kind of position a wild seed card? Sure, the intention with the wild seed card, I think traditionally in other card games, we, we talk about wild cards, but Wild Seed is a, just a direct uh, tribute to Octavia Butler's um, novels, um, the, the novel Wild Seed, if anyone's not familiar uh, specifically. And the intention here is that not for us to uh, suggest uh, topics, but for you to consider what's something that's relevant to you. And so we, we offer and hope that through the chat um, and through joining us with your audio and video turned on, that some of you will actually jump in and, and provide some Wild Seed inspiration here. Yeah, and just to, to add on to that, so if you see a tension in your community that's around, you know, could be around this these tensions, like what does a world look like with more uh, Black women leadership and more community-led building, for instance, um, uh, or more Black storytelling and less white supremacy? Like what are those kinds of tensions that are in your community? And we can give some examples on the next slide too that we have from our perspective uh, as well, um, and just the purpose for our attentions was around rematriation, around healing the planet, 
um, and so on. But if you go to the next slide, we can see some examples of tensions you might think of or relate to. And so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm thinking, uh, they may be small. Uh, so yeah. do we want to maybe read sure. some out? I'm trying to zoom, but I don't know if you can see that on your end. Noor, right, before like, okay. we get started, oh, I just wanted helps. to point out there are there's uh, a bit of liveliness in the chat and some good questions that I don't necessarily have the answers to. So um, maybe someone could just pop in and help moderate questions. Um, yes, uh, I believe. Yes. One question about um, how can Afrofuturism be used to educate children and youth about uh, climate change? Yeah, I can take that one on. Nina? Yes, I can definitely take that one then. So um, at, at MOCA, we have a bi directional teaching sort of format, and it's not about uh, the child or children. Uh, learning only from the adults. It's really about the children and partnership with the adults and you're sort of exploring topics together. So we use, we brought Afrofuturism into our open studio and we um, used art to engage and ask questions. And so one of the questions to the children that we offered was, what would a musical instrument look like 20 years or 30 years from now? And it was a, what, the two and three and four year olds created um, these very interesting uh, musical instruments using um, <laughs> using eggshells and um, spoons and other different um, items that allow children to make music. So we had beans and other products and these children came out with these amazing um, instruments um, now, specifically when it comes to the environment, um, one of the ways that you can sort of engage with children is by asking them questions about the environment. Um, so it could be, what does the air smell like today? So in California, we are seeing a lot of wildfires um, happening and it's destroying thousands and thousands of acres. Children can engage on in those subjects and give their input and explore those topics uh, with minimal adult intervention. And what I mean by adult intervention is that um, it's posing questions and asking them what are their thoughts and how do they see the world uh, when they become adults. So when they become like uh, mommy and mommy or daddy and daddy or moms and dads, when they become um, uh, people who have their own children, how do they see the world being at that time? So it's posing specific questions to them so they can explore the topic using their own imagination. Um, and oftentimes they get to these, these results that um, are not typical responses that you see in adults. And I think that's where uh, we could utilize their support in uncovering answers to, uh, to solutions for the future. Yeah, so I think that's great. Uh, you know, so in a, in a sense, we can start with the tensions that we created. You know, what does the world look like with more uh, Black feminist leadership and more community led building? But we also want to invite you to post your tensions in your community. What does the world look like in 2032 that has more of this and more of that? So, what, what would, you, or, uh, or less of this or less of that? So, what are some of the tensions? You know, let's take a moment and have you just, post in the chat some tensions that you might foresee in your future world of 2032. Um, so let's uh, so what's your wild seed tension? And uh, and let's and so let's just take a moment and uh, think about it and post some tensions that you're thinking about and then we can play with them uh, as we go and move along in the game. So you can also share audio and video, right? Yes. More or less water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an important one, right? That's a good one. The tension between demo participatory democracies and nations led by strong men who get things done. Yes, 
right? We see that kind of growing wave of, of fascism across the world too. Yes, that's a really, really important one. More or less love, yes, love that, right? What does that look like? More or less people living in silos. Yes, so important, right? How can we bridge those gaps between folks? More or less international corporate dominance. Oh, wow, these are really, really great. Um, yeah. Anyone, anyone else? So what we want you to do is think of these tensions you know, ours right now for, you know, the way that we set it up was like, what does the world look like with more or less, well, with more black feminist leadership and more community led building, where we say, you know, where we see figures, especially in the US, like Kamala Harris, who's running for vice president of the United States, you know, and seeing more women like her, like Stacey Abrams, another um, uh, political leader in the US, um, you know, other strong women women writers, artists, um, the women that you see on the screen right now, what does the world look like with, with a more um, feminist leadership and black feminist leadership at, too, and more community led building. So take your tensions right now that you have put up and you know, should be like two more or less, you can, you can combine them like, what does the world look like with more water and more love, for instance, think about that or, you know, and if we go to the next screen, we can then look at what does an object, and some one more screen. <laughs> In this game, we're gonna talk about um, objects from the future. So you're gonna choose an object from the future. What does an object from the future look like in 2032 shaped by these tensions? So for instance, for an example, what does a, a bracelet look like in 2032 that's infused with the world with more black feminist leadership and more community led building? Or, or what does the future look like with, what does a film look like with more black feminist leadership and community led building? Or piercings or a city or a job look like in this future in 2032? So you can, you can stay with our tensions of black feminist leadership and more community led building, or take your own tensions and shape the object of your choice. Um, and you don't have to take these particular objects. You can think of an object in your in your in your home, uh, in your community, uh, in your nation, um, in your neighborhood. What and then we're going to look at like what inspires you to to shape this object. So we're going to choose. So I'm going to ask you to choose an object right now that you're thinking about, and you can post it in the chat. And we're also going to go choose another card called an inspiration card. So the object card, you can, you can have your own wild seed object, and then you can also have your own wild seed inspiration. So let's uh, go to the next slide where we can see um, more inspirations. So you could choose an inspiration. What inspires you politically, culturally, um, musically? What's your wild seed inspiration? You know, for me, it could be Alicia Keys or Janelle Monet where they're both talking about black liberation and different aspects. Um, but what's your wild seed inspiration for 2032? So take a moment and think about, you know, what's your object um, that you wanna take for 2032? And what's an inspiration around that object or an inspiration that could inspire that object and shape that object for the future of 2032? So again, what, what is your object? And you can, you can call it out now or, or post it in the chat um, <clears throat> too. And we would love uh, to hear from you as well. So you can click share audio and video um, if you would like to join on the screen. And if you have questions or need some clarification, um, oh, please do also what share that. Yeah. If you could explain a bit on what the object is, we have a question from Yvonne. Yeah, that's a great question. So an object is like an artifact, you know, something that you maybe see or use or do every day. It could be as simple as like uh, looking at a film or wearing a bracelet 
or you know your job is like an object it's kind of any kind of artifact er, anything that we kind of <laughs> is you know something that we do and feel every day uh it could be the city um you know yeah this is a great example a bracelet that contains uh portable water right excellent so um <clears throat> so basically an object can be anything in your space uh okay great <laughs> So yeah, so let's everyone have, choose an object right now, uh, informed by either the tensions that you're moved by or the tensions that we created in terms of uh, a world with more Black feminist leadership and more community-led building. Oh, I love these objects that are coming in. <laughs> Hologram phones that protect the person or group you're talking with rather than being on the screen. You know, maybe that hologram phone uh, is, a, is about connecting networks of community-led builders, right? So, so yeah, to post your object, I love the one about, let's see, there was a, a bracelet that contains pot of portable water, right? So a bracelet that, that nourishes you, that hydrates you, right, as you go throughout your day, and that maybe empowers you to be a strong leader, too, and help you lead your community. So, yeah, let's 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 love to see some some more objects. You just post them in chat or even uh, uh, sound them out through the audio um, audio capability of the screen. So, <clears throat> mm. great a screen that filters out misinformation and propaganda, living leaving evidence-based facts. Love it, love it. Or meatless cuisines with great umami, umami taste. Yes. <laughs> and um, let's see, let me just, oh, wow. A pair of glasses spectacles with a dial that can help filter out manipulation or mistruths on social media. We need that now, right? <laughs> That's actually yeah. extremely relevant um, for the year 2032 specifically and things that are happen to be unfolding in an alternate 2032 world where uh, deep fakes are much more common. And um, we have a candidate running for president in 2032 who is an um, indigenous uh, woman that is has established a planet first um, agenda and um, there is just in 2032 uh, a deep fake video that was released um, uh, trying to um, uh, uh, weaponize her platform essentially and uh, and bring her down. But uh, it is we do live in a post truth uh, environment and um, our digital age is acquiring a new set of skills and literacy um, that uh the children of the future um are going to have to um adapt uh to um and so these are really excellent yeah so keep them coming like what's your what's your object you know what's your inspiration to you know just you post them and those who are can join us um through audio and visual you know don't don't be afraid to show your face and and, and articulate or you know, discuss your objects and inspirations for 2032. Yes. Um, and uh, and 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 Nina, Audrey, and Nora, yeah, feel free to you know uh, sound out these objects too. I don't want to take up all the airspace. <laughs> A candy that dismantles yes. progeny. <laughs> I I was aligned with Lisa where she said a watch that sounds off an alarm when it reads that you are making assumptions. Um, and you know, we stopped hearing you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was saying that I was aligned with Lisa with uh, the watch that sounds off an alarm when it reads that you're making assumptions instead of actually getting to know a person. So mm -hmm. my object was a watch. Uh, my inspiration is Billie Holiday because of the rawness and the authentic uh, storytelling that she gave via music. Um, and so I thought this watch could project like kind of like a projection, um, life stories. Uh, and when you touch the individual, it will project empathy, spotlighting the commonality between the two people. 
um, and it'll happen within two nanoseconds. So it's a very quick exchange. Wow, wow. And Ivana, uh, um, a candy that dismantle, dismantles uh, misogyny. Wow. So, you know, you eat that candy and you're like, just uh, also kind of not, maybe not, you know, you're, you're, a, better, you're a better human being, you're a better man, um, you know, or, or in general. So that's, that's amazing. Um, love it, love it, love it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I imagine a bracelet that, that carries my ancestral legacy and, and, and Harriet Tubman or Frederick Douglass is speaking to me every day about what, what inspired them and what can inspire me now. Oh, Marie has a good one. Does anyone want to read that one? Something that can spot a fire and it can be put off immediately will help our environment all over the world. Oh my God, we need that in California now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Those would be some earrings. I could see those being earrings. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Totally. I mean, we woke up to orange skies mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago. Yes. So <laughs> actually, since we definitely come up, I will mention that um, uh, one of the things that our candidates of the future um, in or in 2032, 12 years from now, uh, indigenous practices for stopping fires um, have um, finally uh, come back or there's been uh, have been reclaimed because uh, for generations, uh, indigenous practices, not just uh, within the Americas, but all over the world, have um, have uh, been using uh, techniques um, for hundreds of years on controlling fires. Uh, of course, these fires were also um, uh, made extreme due to, to uh, climate change um, and uh, global warming. However, um, uh, yes, we we have envisioned that over the next 12 years uh, more and more of our indigenous knowledge and wisdom is um is being um is being claimed reclaimed well um we and we have some others yeah i love that indigenous prescribed burns mm -hmm. um and then there's one here a lotion for the black african child that protects them from disease mm -hmm. poverty racism so it's kind of like an invo uh, in a, a vulnerability cloak. So that's really cool, um, right? And then also another one, a bark cloth is the most popular text, textile and uh, bark cloth trees planted all over the world. So yeah. Um, yes, uh, so for Marsha and then Camilla is about the bark tree. So working in Uganda, um, it's, a, it's a fire repellent, wow. And then a spray that restores damaged ecosystems to a sustainable balance. So, wow. You know, I think there's a definite theme here of, of uh, ecotopia, you know, eco balance, uh, rematriation, healing the planet that I could definitely see here in 2032. <clears throat> yeah. So, what other uh, what other objects and in, in, in inspirations do you have? Just post them on the chat, and um, you know what what informs you. What does that world look like? You know, with our tensions, which is you know, a black a world with black feminist leadership, more black feminist leadership, and more community led building. Those are our tensions, and you know, think about your tensions and your objects that you want to uh, in, you know have this world be infused with. Um, so, and feel free, you know, on, we, we have you on, we can have you on audio and visual and on chat. Lonnie, I had one idea to share, which was um, some type of filter. You know, one of the issues that we have a, a real tension here in Oakland is racial profiling. And I was imagining some type of filter. So when people try to phone in or even via email, something that filters out profiling. Mm -hmm. Love it. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, just think back to how many times I've been profiled. <laughs> Started at UCLA when I was going to college there and was profiled by the police. 
because I, I fit a, a description. Right. Luckily, I have my ID. So, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, and it's, can someone read that from Ann McStay, a portable spectrometer? Yes, a portable spectrometer that reads the useful chemicals and compounds in previously untested trees and plants. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, I, we would, please feel free to join in with us. We can have up to um, uh, six people, I believe, uh, join us in the session. Um, so yes, we wanna kind of reiterate the invitation for you to join us. Um, in the space. And as you do, I, I was uh, just kind of thinking about uh, one thing that came up in um, in some of our uh, speculations in the past together, like the power of language and how the language, um, the language that we uh, currently use, um, and I'll speak specifically to the English language, um, uh, isn't the language of the future and how we need to be very rigorous about the words um, that we use. And that's something that each of us kind of um, are very aligned and connected um, uh, to with our work. And uh, I'm wondering, Andre, if you would like to share a reflection on uh, why we chose to use uh, matriation um, in, in some of our uh, imagining specifically. Sure. Um... I came across the phrase rematriation during a uh, native land acknowledgement ceremony that I was able to attend during the unconference in Oakland last summer. And um, when I, what I appreciate about the term rematriation is that I believe in putting out into the world what it is uh, being the change uh, that we want to see. And for me as a writer, that involves the language. And so um, I've been hearing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, down with patriarchy, disrupt patriarchy. And for me, if you put a word out into the universe, you're just reiterating that. And so I wanted to find a way to stop saying that which I no longer want to be part of. And so for me to talk about, to move away from saying anti-patriarchy and to move towards rematriation just felt uh, like it resonated as true and the thing and the change that I wanted to be and begin navigating the world um, as a change agent for. So I can get behind rematriation and push. And for me personally, it, it comes from, um, there's a Mother Teresa quote where she said, um, I will never go to an anti-war march, but when you have a march for peace, I will be there. So this is um, in, in like mind with Mother Teresa, that, that's my uh, impetus for shifting my language. The next term I would love to find an alternate for is decolonize because colonize is still the root word of decolonize. And I would love to stop saying that word as well. So if anyone has any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, into one thing that yeah. keeps coming up in our imagining is um, a future where uh, we can code switch between languages or switch between languages as somebody that speaks um, uh, um, my ancestral language that I feel is um, very, it can be more inclusive. <laughs> and there are certain words that create space for imagining futures. And I think what if we, we, you know, normalize switching between um, uh, languages or normalize speaking uh, other languages, um, and uh, replacing words that no longer serve the future with words that do from other languages um, is something that uh, I think uh, really resonates. And I want to acknowledge that we have a few minutes left um and we wanted to we also had uh, a few more or andy bryant um thank you for being with us more climate control systems designed by women um yes yeah um we we wanted to uh leave you all with um this uh prompt that we would actually love for you to um to, co to complete, uh, let us know what you're seeding the future with. And we would love for you to also share what you're seeding the future with, or, or even um, all the uh, artifacts from the future that you have um, ideated with us today in the main chat room um, of uh, the Future Summit so that uh, those that were not able uh, to be with us in the session can um, be inspired by your uh, wild seed um, <laughs> imagination. 
or imagining. Um, so let us know what you're seeding the future with in the chats here, as well as uh, in the main chat room. Um, and I want to, uh, as maybe as we close out, like um, Audrey, Elani, and Nina, uh, you could also help out our um, participants to say uh, what you are seeding the future with. Oh, there we go, Audrey. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, Audrey, did you want to share your cloud? Yes. I'm seeding the future with more compassion. Mm. I'm seeding the future with more imagination. I'm seeding the future with more opportunities for children's voices to be heard. Um, I'm seeding the future with more accountability and responsibility. Um, great. Well, yes. Oh, oh Andy, oh, yeah. that's beautiful. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Glad to oh, see the future with yeah. more stillness to hear ours and others' inner voices. Wow. Ooh, ooh. That just, yeah. And there's an earlier I mean, one wow. that says, I, I am it. seeding the future with more intuition. Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Andy and, and seeding the, or Yvonne, that is. Yvonne. And then I'm seeing the future with sustainable fashion. Yes. Love that. Love that. Yes. Gotta Thank get you all so much. And um, please do share those in the main chat room. Uh, yeah. we'd, we'd love for other participants to also um, share what they are seeding the future with. Um, yes. Thank you so much for having us. It was um, a true pleasure uh, to be with you all. And um, thank you. Of course, Audrey, Nina, and Lani. Um, you, Noor. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Noor. Thanks, Nina. Thanks, Audrey. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> do we, I want to say it leave? says we have <laughs> time left. Say, I'm confused. Anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, oh, I yeah. think our session officially uh, ends. Um, now, but I, I'm loving. Please do keep the comments where yeah. I, I wish there was a way to save um, the chat. Actually, oh, um, yeah. there's one that says, "I am seeding the future with more stillness to hear ours and others' inner voices." Mm -hmm. mm. That would be interesting. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take yeah, screenshots um, of these so that yeah, uh, good we idea. Can, they're really uh, beautiful. And um, if you're still with us, I see there are people still in the room. Actually, um, our websites uh, are available in our, um, we, we kind of put them here, but I'm going to share uh, them again. Um, or, yes. Uh, can you help me with your, uh, to add your websites, Lani, Adrian? Yes. Great. Yes. Yes, I think we uh, let's do that. Um, oh, I would put a copy and see, paste so, uh, chat to a Google Doc. I'll share um, it with you. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Okay. That's great. Um, so, yeah, for more about the game, here's uh, AfroRhythms.com mm -hmm. uh, that you can go to. Um, and don't forget about Mocha and uh, Ancestral Futures. Um, and also uh, the Afrofuturist uh, podcast. Oh, we have the transcript. No need to do all that. And, uh, Data collect. That is very true. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, great. Thank you. I'm getting a sense from the comments that this was not the typical session that people are used to seeing. So I'm happy that we brought a fresh perspective yeah yeah so true <laughs> um. um yeah 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 definitely um this is so fun i just loved hearing people's perspectives you know from from places that we don't normally 
you know, uh, hear from, uh, or, you know, in our everyday uh, American context. So I love that. Um, that's yes. awesome. Oh, thank you. Camilla and so, Marie have uh, Audrey, Nina, can you just post your, your yep, website? We did. I posted Mocha. Yep. Thank you. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Great. I am looking forward to, um, to seeing, cool, cool. I'm hoping that this is, oh, Hi. I'm How hoping that this inspires in the main chat room um, for the future summit um, <laughs> some more uh, seeding of the future. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. So <laughs> um, <laughs> hard to say goodbye, but. <laughs> I think, yeah. um, yeah, should I'm not sure how we how this session ends. I I believe there's still participants. And yeah, I, I think they want to continue playing the game. <laughs> 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 They're more entering the session. I mean, um, yeah, it, Let's have some more attention cards. Yeah, or if there if there are any questions. <laughs> um, oh, please press review. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Stanford. Well, Stanford's local to oh, us here, so we we're should actually, look into that. We're actually working. We're actually um 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 we're actually going to be working with Lisa Solomon at the uh, design school at Stanford. So I'm going to make sure that um my colleagues here join us for sessions with them. So um yeah, yes. that'll be fun. Yeah, we actually Great. just had a conversation with them. I would say please leave to yeah. the session and head over to the main stage. All right. So. Well, um, thanks once again. Um, okay. And uh, thank you, Anne. Okay. Please press leave. Yeah, okay. Cool. All right. Okay. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye.